One of the key things that I've seen is now how much attention cybersecurity is getting from boards and leaders um, in government and outside of government. So now it's become a real focus um, and it's a real focus of the business and they're really driving that down um, to their sort of ICT teams and their business teams to say, look, what are we doing to protect our services and how are we protecting our data? And there's more of a focus on that now than I think we've ever seen before. So some of these big breaches have impacted everyone. They've impacted all of us individually and, um, and it's really shifted that focus now um, to really see that becoming um, part of every board's remit and boards are starting to bring on cyber security um, professionals to sit on the board and I think that's really driving um, a lot of change that we're seeing. One of the, the key changes I think um, I've seen just in the last few years in cyber security that's been driven by this is this change on uh, looking at supplier risk and third parties and how we are managing those kinds of risks. Um, in government we rely on third parties and suppliers a lot um, and suddenly um, everyone has realised that there's there's this risk there that we have uh, no, no control of that risk really but we own all the consequences when that goes wrong um, and we've seen that in some of these data breaches recently. Um, another big shift for government is having to suddenly scale up and being able to manage some of the consequences from those breaches so while we're not responsible for the breaches um I think of some of the big ones recently governments had to step in and very quickly do things like provide um, new identity documents to people that have been impacted and provide that advice and support to the community and really step in in a leadership role so that's um, some of the big changes that i've seen So one of the big projects that I'm really excited to be working on right now is um, we're looking at how can we uplift that third party risk management across all of state government. I think um, it's, it's something that cybersecurity teams have really um, struggled with. A lot of our agencies aren't really well resourced in cybersecurity and they've got such a big focus on just trying to um, implement the basic controls and manage that that then when they're told oh you also need to now do this third party risk um, it's it's a difficult thing to do so what we're trying to do we're never going to get enough cyber security resources basically to be able to manage this risk in state government and we rely really heavily on our third parties so instead what we're going to try and do is embed um, third party risk management into the procurement framework for the state. So we do really well at managing some of the other risks around procurement, but there's no requirements at the moment to consider cyber security risks. So we really want to um, embed that in the procurement framework so that anyone, no matter where they are in the business, in state government, and no matter what they're buying, um, will be able to have a really simple, easy framework to follow, to consider what are the risks to the data, what are the risks to this service that I'm buying, um, what are the potential risks to the community or to our agency, and then give them some really simple um, steps that they can follow and um, things that they can implement into their sourcing into their contracts and then into their ongoing sort of contract management processes to try and reduce that risk for South Australia. Yeah, sure. So I think um, one of the big factors is skills. So we really need to um, continue to uplift our partnerships um, with uh, the different education institutions and look at different pathways for people to come and work with us in cyber security. Um, I think uh, as some people have talked about today already, it's not all about technical skills um, and we need to be really flexible about bringing people in from different parts of the business to help us with these cyber security challenges that we have um, that can help spread that back into the business and into the community 
as well. So um, I think really being open to new ideas about how we bring people into the field and what kind of skills that we're looking for and how we can help people build those skills up once they've decided that maybe science security is an interesting career and they'd like to be involved. I think that will really um, be a critical thing to unlock the future opportunities for South Australia and help us support some of those um, goals that we have to um, be a secure state and support um, so that economic priorities around all this and everything as well. Sure, I think it's been like a fabulous event to hear all the different um, thought bubbles from some of the leaders in our industry and around government and the sector. Um, it's always such a great opportunity to catch up with colleagues um, and, and learn about what everyone else is doing. Um, and probably, I think one of the biggest takeaways from today has been the focus on trust and digital trust and what in, how important that is to government and then looking at that from a cybersecurity perspective and what an important part cyber has to play in maintaining that digital trust in, in government and in the services that we provide to citizens and how that can really help um, uplift what we do for vulnerable people in particular and how just how important that has been. Um, COVID shed a big light on how important that trust is and privacy for um, the what to make us be able to support citizens in government at this time. So.